Hi everybody, my name is Rob Power. I'm a mobile learning researcher and I'm also an adjunct professor of educational technology with the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. Recently, during one of my Adobe Connect sessions with one of my Masters of Education courses, I was asked to give some tips and tricks on getting started with the writing process. And in addition to getting started with the writing process, I was asked to give some advice on how to handle peer feedback because they have an assignment where they will be getting some peer feedback from their classmates. Uh, in this case, we are simulating the journal uh, system where they're going to get uh, some anonymous peer feedback. No one's going to know whose paper they're reviewing and no one's going to know who's giving them the feedback. So you might end up getting some feedback like this. This is an example of some anonymous feedback that I got when I submitted a uh, journal with some of my colleagues to the International Review of Research on Open and Distributed Learning, IRODL. So you can see, you know, they've accepted our paper, but they have some feedback from the reviewers that they would like to see addressed before they print the final version of the paper and the comments are separated by reviewer A and if I scroll down I'll see more comments down here from reviewer B. So the way that I normally handle this is I create a spreadsheet like this and I take all of the comments from reviewer A and put them in. I give them a number, comment 1, comment 2, comment 3 and I indicate which reviewer made the comment and then I actually copy paste the actual comment itself in. I'll leave myself another column here uh, for how I'm going to address it and another column for the page number on which that appears. So in this case, once I've gone through the draft of the paper and addressed the particular comments from the reviewer, I've made notes in this column here as to what exactly I did. And I indicated the exact page in here for the editor's uh, purposes so they'll know exactly where to look to, to verify that I have addressed those comments. Now keep in mind when you receive peer feedback in the journal review submission or even with an academic paper for a graduate studies course or an undergraduate course you don't necessarily need to accept the feedback that's given and make the changes that are requested but you should be able to justify why you don't do that so in this case I have some examples in here this one not possible to address this comment at this point t-tests of significance were not possible nor warranted da 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 so you can see that I have actually looked at their concern and I've given a valid reason why I won't be addressing that in the revisions that I'm going to make to my paper. Once I've gone through this process and tracked everything for myself, this is a great way of keeping track of it for yourself when you're doing your revisions. I will take these comments and copy paste them into a Word document and just clean up the formatting a bit to make it easier for the editor of the journal or your instructor in your course to see what comments were given to you and how exactly you address those.